Hi, it's Mitch here with Ron Romanelli here to go over some week two college football picks. Ron's take on today's on uh, this week's action. Of course, uh, we're here every week giving out some free picks for college football. Of course, Ron also does NFL picks as well as many other things. We have free picks on all the games every day at sportschatplace.com. And of course, if you're looking to bet today, be sure to check out our sportsbook bonus offers. We have them under the odds page as well as a link in the description of this video for a sportsbook bonus offer. Great way to get the a way to stock up multiple sports betting accounts. Ron, I mean, we see it so many times, the lines, um, you know, the difference between four and a half and five and a half, difference between five, five and a half, difference between six and seven, just seems to come into play every single time, right? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I mean, it's important to shop your lines, especially with college football and the NFL. Um, a half point can make the difference between winning and losing. So make sure you, you, know, you have plenty of books ready to go and shop those lines. Absolutely. Well, we got some great games in store. We usually go over in these videos about five games. I think that's where we are for today. If we start off with the Holy War, Utah and BYU, you know, this used to be a game later on in the season around rivalry time, but now because of the conference affiliations of Utah when they moved to the Pac-12 a few years ago, BYU being an independent the game happens early in the season now. It's always a good one. And Ron, what do you got? What do you got for going on in Utah? BYU. Yeah, it should be another great game. I love watching the Holy War each year. Um, Utah has definitely had the advantage in recent seasons uh, owning the series. They've won the series straight up since 2009. That was their last loss uh, to BYU in triple overtime. You know, I really wasn't in love with the way that BYU looked against Arizona. I gave up over 330 passing yards, and the secondary was definitely exploited a bit. Um, I think Utah can beat you both ways offensively. I think they can take you to the ground, but also they can attack you through the air as well. So I think you're going to see uh, a multi-pronged attack from Utah's offense in this one. I think it should be a great game. I think it's going to be close in the first half, but I like Utah to end up on top by 10 points in the end. So I'll lay the points with Utah. Always a very physical game. It'll be interesting to me. I'm most interested in watching that quarterback play at Utah. You know, I think it was heavily touted a year ago, and we didn't really see the results there. But I think this year, um, you know, there really is no excuses anymore. So uh, we go to your next game here, another trophy game, Iowa and Iowa State going at it. And, of course, these games traditionally just an all-out war. What have you got going on in this one? Yeah, I mean, this is going to be another battle. I think it's going to be two strong defenses. We saw Iowa's defense that definitely showed up against Indiana, allowing only six points. They forced three interceptions on Penix Jr., who I had as the best uh, quarterback in the Big Ten heading into the season. I still think he is that. That just shows you Iowa's defense. And, you know, Iowa State, they uh, did struggle a little bit to Northern Iowa, uh, but that's not really, you know, a 16 to 10 win over a tough FCS opponent doesn't really scare me. I mean, we saw. Northern Iowa take uh, Iowa State to overtime a couple years ago. So I think this is going to be a close, tight game, defensive war. Like Mitch said, these, these games are always usually a battle. I'm going to take the under. We got a low uh, total in this one, but I think it's low for a reason. So I'm going to take the under. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I think it's going to be a tight game. Generally is between these two teams. We saw Iowa's defense was outstanding last week against Indiana. You know, it's always when it's turnovers, though. It's always a little tough to say because turnovers is one of those things that's just hard to carry over from week to week instead of, you know, just a team that, like, stuffs the run or, you know, it's yeah. tough to pass on. You know, turnovers, is, you know, it's, it's, it's a different – type of game we go to the game between app state and miami this is an interesting one that app state defense looks pretty good the running attack looks solid of course now they step it up against an acc opponent that can run like the win ego a little bruised i think from the alabama game for miami but i have to say as a miami fan really not concerned about from what we saw and i think uh give nick Saban six months to prepare for anyone well that's why he wins them all on his openers <laughs> ron what are you thinking here yeah, you know, I, I really wasn't – I actually thought Miami did pretty good in that second half for that game. I thought you saw – you could take away some things that were improving, you know, improvements in that second half. Obviously, De'Aaron King didn't have his best performance. But, you know, we definitely saw that Miami is one of the most more talented teams, especially on offense, in the country. And I think that they're in a good spot here at home. I think you're going to look for them to prove something here with Miami. You know, App State, one of the tough teams in the Sun Belt, usually, you know, a top – contender in that conference but you got coastal in louisiana this year that could definitely make a run at it but um you know i like app state but i do think miami is just a much better team so i'm gonna lay the points with miami i think the canes get a two touchdown win at home 
I like the Canes as well. I just think that, uh, you know, coming off of that Alabama game, we're probably going to get some value in the line here with the Canes too because just perception of the way people saw it, and I know that not everybody sees it the way that I see it, but as a Cane fan, you know, I, I've seen it over the years. Sometimes it's a bad call. Sometimes it's, you know, a single play. Yeah, they were just better than us, you know, and I think they're better than everybody else too, and I think oh, that yeah. Bryce Young um, might be one of the best first game performances I've ever seen in my entire life of watching football. Um, it wasn't, to me, just uh, his ability to hit the open receiver. Miami sent blitzes on him, and they got pressure on him. It was not like, uh, it wasn't like, you know, he was just sitting back there and the Alabama offensive line was dominating Miami. What happened was his, his Miami blitzers were running through untouched. And this guy just sidestepped them. It wasn't like he ran out of the pocket and was taken off down the field. It wasn't anything like that, like a Lamar Jackson type thing. It was a set, a step to the side. The defender goes past him, and uh oh, <laughs> it was. And he did it a bunch. He's going to do it to a lot of people. There's a reason why he's making all that money, and there's a reason why that uh, I believe he's a Heisman candidate. To be honest, oh yeah, as a freshman. Oh yeah. Anyways, we move on to the next game, and we'll probably have plenty of time to talk about Alabama over the course of the season, but we move to Pitt versus Tennessee. This is an interesting one because we go to Rocky Top, but Tennessee is actually the dog in this one, right? Getting three points at home against Pitt. Uh, This is an odd spot. SEC dominating the ACC in week one games. Yeah, you know, I I was a bit surprised to see uh, Tennessee as the dog, but I dug a little deeper, and, and I actually agree with the odds makers here, and I'm leaning towards Pittsburgh here. You know, I trust Kyle Pickett, a quarterback, a lot more than I do Joel Milton the third. I didn't like the way Tennessee looked against Bowling Green. I know it was the first game of the season and a lot of new uh, pieces on that team, but still, to only be leading 14-6 to six against the worst team in FBS football in Bowling Green, it's just, you know, as an SEC team, I, I, I just I, I have to fade him here. I think that Pittsburgh's just a better team. They have more to play with offensively. I think that they're just going to, they're going to win this game by a touchdown, uh, but I think it's going to be a long season for Tennessee. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think this is one of the tougher games on the board there. I think, you know, Tennessee does have the home field, but, you know, Pitt, oh, boy, we've seen this team do it before, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them do it again. We got Tulsa versus Oklahoma State to wrap up our picks for today, and, you know, Oklahoma State looked super sloppy last week um, in their opener. So uh, do they bounce back here, or is this just uh, – way too many points if you're looking at the favorite i think it's way too many points i think you know tulsa obviously an inexcusable loss to uc davis and fcs team um but you know i don't think it's going to define their team as a whole this season we know tulsa is usually very sound defensively and i think you're going to see that in this game as well and like mitch mentioned you know oklahoma state was not they did not play well in their first game against missouri state they were 33 point favorites and they won the game by seven points so i mean two teams that definitely did not uh, live up to their expectations in week one but in a game like you're getting you're getting 14 points or 13 and a half it looks like with Tulsa Tulsa's very very sound defensively I think this is a close game I think it I would lean towards the under as well but in, in a defensive team like Tulsa that's just too many points I think they keep this game close and uh, maybe even pull off the upset but I'll just take the points just in case yeah Oklahoma State was pretty miserable last week and I even though the score was you know obviously way inside the number and Missouri State scored a late touchdown to kind of dress it up a little bit and make it even closer than the, than the score was. The quarterback play was abysmal, just absolutely horrific. And, you know, to me, it's like, I, you know, I just, you know, we're filming this, this video on Tuesday. So it was, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not even 24 hours removed from that Louisville performance on Monday night with some of the worst quarterback play you'll ever see. But anyways, Ron, thanks again for, for your picks. And of course we'll see you on uh, sports chat place all season long, giving out uh, college and NFL picks. And of course you can find Ron's articles at pick dogs. You can find his, uh, you can see him on our live shows on the weekends generally. So have a great day. And, uh, Make it a winning week in college football.